Boss Tube friends. My name is Leticia and I am back for another Floss Tube update. Um, it's only been about six months since I've done my last Floss, tubes, floss Tube update, which is totally fine. Um, I did um, a Floss Tube, what is it called? Um, Flossmas update um, to participate in Caroline's um, Flossmas in December, I believe it was. I'm pretty sure it was in, this, in December. And that was the last update I've done. So that didn't really even include um, anything that I've been working on as far as my normal whips go. Um, it included what I was working on at that time in a special segment on um, skin conversions. But as far as a regular floss tube update, I do believe my last update was in October of 2019. Things have changed since then. I'm not gonna go into detail, but I wish you all well and good health and good spirits and all the things. I'm thinking of all of you. Um, my family and I are doing well. Everybody's fine. Everybody's healthy, thank God. Um, I just wish everybody a smooth transition into this new normal that we're in. But this is a channel about cross-stitch, and I am going to talk about what I've been doing over the past six months. So, a couple of life updates. Um, nothing major, but I did uh, post a couple of days ago, and I know many of you are fans of my little friend Bella. Bella is my pug. Bella butt, Bella boo, all the things. Bella had an interesting week this past week, um, so just a quick update because I've been posting pictures and people have been reaching out. Is she okay? What happened? Um, Bella had an emergency surgery last week. We noticed um, a growth on her backside that was starting to swell and look a little bit angry over the course of um, a couple of days. We noticed it last Monday and um, it became a little bit more emergent um, by Wednesday. So... Um, she was lethargic, very cuddly, very needy, more so than normal. Um, we called the vet and um, took her over there, and the vet started saying um, he thought that it, he looked to, it was her anal glands that were swollen. Um, the one on the left-hand side was really bad. Um, and he um, believed, based on what he expressed, um, from the glance, he believed that it was possibly a tumor, um, potentially cancerous, um, to the point where he said that if we had waited an additional week, um, there was a possibility that if it was cancerous, it would have spread into her lungs and she would not have made it through the year. So that was real. Um, long story short, Bella is fine. Her prognosis is wonderful. It was not a tumor. It was not cancerous. Um, but her anal gland, somehow, we still don't know exactly how this happened, um, but it ruptured internally. The vet said it looked as if a firecracker went off inside her little body. Um, so she had to have surgery. She had surgery that day. Um, we picked her up. Um, she was very lethargic. Um, but it's been a few days now. Today is Monday. So, um... She is not 100% back to herself. She's not running around um, with, you know, doing the zoomies as we call them when she starts running around at, you know, lightning speed with the cat and playing dead and all the things. She's not doing all that, but she's running up and down the steps. Um, she's cuddly. You can see it in her eyes um, that she's doing better. She's loving peanut butter coated medication. She's loving the peanut butter treatment. I'm very happy with that. Um, we did have an incident yesterday where she was, she had her medication and it kind of takes her down for a while. She usually passes out right after that. And she was sleeping in her spot. Um, we have a, a comforter over the couch, um, you know, because she had, has suit, she still has sutures. The tubes, um, the tubes were removed yesterday. So she doesn't have the tubes in her anymore, um, but she still has sutures. And unfortunately, she was sleeping on the back of the couch where she always sleeps. 
and my husband and I were sitting there watching TV and we heard this loud thud. I screamed. My husband yelled, was that the dog? The dog fell off the daggone couch. Um, she's fine. She's 100% fine, but it was like dead weight. It was a loud thud. She's a chunky little pug. Okay. She's 21 pounds and she just dead weight on the floor, but she's totally fine. Um, no sutures were, were torn or ruptured. She's fine. She will be fine. Um, but I just wanted to give that um, little update on Bella because I know I've posted some pictures and people were concerned. Um, you know, and we all love her for babies. And in this community, we've grown to know each other's um, for babies. Case in point, not so long ago, everybody was so concerned about um, Thor, Jesse's Thor, you know, um, Whenever we have, you know, situations that uh, uh, affect our little fur babies, we all seem to kind of yeah, um, rally around them. So I appreciate all the love and support you showed our little Bella, but, but she is fine. She just has to go um, through this process to fully heal. She's healing from the inside out um, because of the nature of the wound. And it'll probably be about three to four months until she's um back to our 100% healed, but we're already seeing signs of our old girl back. So all as well, but I just wanted to give that quick update. Um, nothing else is really happening. I'm working from home. My husband is working from home. Um, Troy is home from college. We are pretty certain it's going to be for the remainder of the semester. So she's taking online classes. So everybody's adapting. Everybody's adapting to the new normal. Um, we have no complaints. We are really surrounding ourselves with gratitude um, and just remembering to be thankful for what we do have um, more than we are remorseful for what is no longer. Um, and I wish you all the same. But like I said, this is a channel about cross stitch. So thank you for indulging me on my little update on Sweet Bella. Um, but I know many of you are happy to hear that. So I'm happy to share it. So to my right, I have a pile. I have a pile of things. Um, so what I've decided to do, um, because I haven't recorded in, like I said, six months. Um, as of late, I've been on a bit of a monogamous kick. If you follow me on IG, you see I have basically been working on one thing for the most part, aside from a few random starts here and there. Um, I did go through a period where I was starting all the things and, but for the month of March, I participated in March Stitchy Madness. And it reminded me a lot of Stitch Mania. Um, the concept of stitching a lot of different projects, this, that, and the other. Um, if you followed me for any length of time, um, particularly over the last couple of few years, rather, um, when I started to participate in Stitch Mania, I've never been one to do the 15 or the 31 starts. I usually go the monogamous route, um, which I'm also going to do again this year, and I'll talk about that. So in the same vein, when March Stitchy Madness came up, I decided I was going to work on something that, one, I truly enjoyed working on, two, um, where I kind of saw a finish in sight, um... I don't have a number three. It was just those two things. So um, that being said, I uh, worked on Tribal Monkey for, I believe, the entire month of March, except for when it was on March 14th, which I remember because that's my aunt's birthday. It was March 14th that Caroline from um, Off the Grid Needle Arts and um, the Friday Off the Grid Facebook group declared a hashtag self-care new start day. And that was March 14th. Um, and I kind of jumped on her coattails and said, can we make this an annual Friday off the grid group holiday where we have a self-care new start every March 14th? And that seemed to go well. So I, I don't know, our first annual self-care new start. I did start something new on that date. And I think I worked on it for about a week, maybe less. Um, and then I went right back into um, Tribal Monkey. And now I'm focusing on a finish. So that was a really long-winded way of saying that I don't have a lot of current whips to show because for the last 
month and a half, I've only been working on one thing. Um, but I've been working on a lot over the course of the last six months. So I pulled out all the things that I've worked on in the last six months. They're all piled up right here off camera because it's a hot mess. Um, I also have some haul that I've acquired over the last six months um, that I want to share with you. I also want to talk about um, books, specifically the Cross Stitchers Who Read book club um, and what I've been up to with my reading adventures this year. And I think that will make for a nice long visit. So get your cup of coffee, get your cup of tea, as Ingeborg would say. Cheers. Um, and just settle in and let's have a visit because we haven't chatted for a while. So first up, I'm going to show you what I've been working on recently. So Tribal Monkey. Tribal Monkey, I started, give you a little bit of history, quick and dirty version. Many of you have been following my progress with Tribal Monkey since 2017. When I first started, this is Tribal Monkey, um, by Waya Auto, Why Iota, there's the name, Y-I-O-T-A-S, Cross Stitch, and I pronounce it Why I Auto Cross Stitch, um, because it's fun, that's why I Auto Cross Stitch. That's how I read it, I hope that's correct, but that's how I interpret it. So this is the Rainbow Tribal Monkey. For those of you that are new to my channel, um, I started this initially in 2017 on a beautiful piece of antique lilac linen by XJU Designs. Um, we had a bit of a tragedy because, as you can see at the bottom, I can't see it because it's backwards. It says the size, it was a 28 count piece of even weave, and it says the size for 28 count even weave is 19.7 by 17.4. So I started stitching them on a fat quarter, which is give or take 18 by 27. Um, and I thought that this was the size of the fabric that was needed and it's not, it's the size of the design, um, the stitch count. It was the size of the actual design. So there was no way this beautiful monkey was fitting on that. And I had to start it all over again. Um, and I love this project so much that that's exactly what I did. I believe it was almost, I think it was almost immediately, if I recall correctly. So I changed from a piece of purple linen to a piece of gold, golden, I don't remember the exact name of the color, but it is quite gold, um, 25 count even weave, um, one over one. So number one, he is a lot less pixelated. He is um, a much tighter, um, design and number two he absolutely fits so without further ado here is my tribal monkey so as you can see he is almost done um, I have to do the black inside this ear right here surrounding this little red spot right here and in between these little orange bars and do the black and the orange in this negative space over here. And then I start work working on his forehead. And that should go maybe right about up to this high. Um, I can't see through this. So yeah, that's my tribal monkey. Um, I'm focusing on him for the remainder of April. I'm hoping that he will be finished by May 1st um, because Stitch Mania and I have specific plans for Stitch Mania where I am going to work on blue Moroccan lace, my Chatelaine design for that entire month. Maybe I'll get a finish, maybe I won't, but I will definitely get some progress. <clears throat> so um, everything else I'm going to show you from this point forward. Some things I've worked on recently, as I said, um, self-care new start. Uh, actually, I think I had two self-care new starts that day on March 14th. Um, April 1st was high tea. I had a high tea new start. Um, and everything else, I'm pretty certain, I checked on my Instagram feed, 
um, to see what I've worked on since October. So I'm pretty certain you haven't seen the updates um, for the other things that I've shown you outside of Instagram. And if you have, it's fine. It's okay. And then after that, we will go into haul. Now, this is in no particular order. I'm just kind of sorting my way through the pile. So, oh, Tribal Monkey. Maybe I'll show off the bags that, not show off, that sounds terrible. But maybe I'll just show the bags that they're stored in. Um, this is Tribal Monkey's bag. This is a project bag that was made for me by Diana from It Is Kismet, and she presented it at um, the very first New Jersey Floss Tube Retreat as a gift to me. I'm going to quickly show you the front of it. It's the vinyl. I don't want to show too much because, as you can see, Tribal Monkey is housed in there, um, and he's been in there ever since. So this bag has gotten a lot of love. It was made beautifully and most certainly has held up beautifully. Um, and it'll continue to get a lot, lot of love even when Tribal Monkey retires. Um, the next one is Bountiful Harvest, which um, is a Filipino design um, that I got off of Etsy. That is what it translates to. I'm not going to attempt um, to say it because I don't want to butcher the name. This is housed in my, I think this is my very first Garon Toten bag. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it has seals on it, and the inside looks like pool water. I'm about to cough. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and this is one of their bigger bags. I prefer the the smaller bags, but this is perfect because it houses everything from the design to my whole entire box of floss. Um, I haven't worked on this in quite a while, but I have worked on this since we last spoke. And I'll show you my progress. Um, let me see if I have the design in here. The cover design, I'm pretty sure I do. One moment, please. Just hiccup. Didn't need to share that with you, but I did. Um... Here we go. This is the design, what it will look like. Absolutely love this. Love, love, love. Love it so much that I went back and bought um, one of their other designs, which is a little bit similar, but definitely different. Um, and here is my progress on that. I absolutely love this design because it uses color combinations that are not, um, I wouldn't have thought would work, but they do. Um, it's also big blocks of color. So this is, um, for all intents and purposes, a full coverage design. Um, it's not the typical rectangular shape, but it is everything that's in here is full color coverage. There is minimal back stitching, as you can see on the corn. Um, that's about it on the corn and in the basket as well. Not a lot of back stitching at all. Um, but I love the big blocks of color. And if I had my way, this is how I would prefer to stitch all full coverage designs. I appreciate the level of detail that comes with confetti, but this is a much more pleasurable way to stitch for me. Um, so that's my update on that. I was a little bit addicted to this pattern for a while. Um, I think when I started it, I stitched on it, I want to say for like a month and a half. I don't know, but I, I was stuck for a minute um, because it was comforting stitching to me and I just, I got into that groove. I'm going to show this again. Cross Stitch Designs Rena. That is the name of the Etsy shop. That is the name of the pattern. I will link it below. And it translates to beautiful, bountiful harvest, excuse me. I don't know if I was saying beautiful harvest before. It translates to bountiful harvest. 
Um, thank you, Abby, for educating me on that. All right. Almost done. No, we're not. This next one is um, another beautiful bag by Diana. It is Kismet. This was a purchase um, on one of her sales in Emily's Eclectic Possessions group. I mean, skeletal mermaids, why not, right? But something about this bag, the Jaco Jaco Jacobean feel to the flowers, very attractive to me. And also skeletal mermaids. Yeah, playing instruments. It's kind of cool. And then on the front, you can see it's a nice wavy interior. And there's my threads. So, let's see what's inside of here, shall we? So, in October, I know it was in October, um, it was my sister-in-law's 40th birthday, and we went to Virginia Beach. Um, she had a surprise birthday party. I've been looking for these. I've been looking for these. They were hiding in this bag, and I think I just ordered more. Can't have enough needles, right? But anyway. Um, we went to Virginia Beach to celebrate my sister-in-law's 40th birthday party. It was a surprise party. It was fantastic. But while we were there, I went to my favorite local needle workshop, which is Dying to Stitch. And I bought this and the next thing that I'm about to show you. Um, while I was there, I picked up the 13th Colony Bay, um, series from By the Bay Needle Arts. You might have seen our friend Ginger Gerald stitching this. I believe he finished it. Not sure. I don't remember, but I know he's working on it or was working on it. Um, and these are kind of wrinkled because I'll show you why in a minute. But it is a three-part series that I am stitching all on one piece of fabric. There's part one. There is part two. And there is part three. And I'm stitching them all together in one big band. This is, um, this was actually picked out by my husband. He saw it on the wall. The model was stitched and he loved it. Um, he has a very good eye for picking out model stitches that appeal to him. I am still on the hunt um, for the Earth Gatherer um, by Shepherd's Bush because he fell in love with that. Um, I called the Needle Workshop to see if they could order it for me. The model, the not model is on their wall. Um, still no go. Um, so we'll see. It'll get into my hot little hands one day. Um, so fun fact about these, but about this. Should I go ahead and call it a triptych since I'm stitching them all together? I think that would fit. Um, these are all, by the way, Needle Arts does DMC, all DMC. I decided to take a chance and convert it to Sulky threads. Um, I have, I believe I have the entire set of Sulky. Um, I went a little bit crazy with them when they first, um, not when they first came out, but when I first realized that they could be used to um, replace DMC on some projects quite effectively. Um, so I went through my Silky collection and except for, I think there's a couple of DMCs in here. There's three DMCs in here that, not that I couldn't find a match, but because they were so close together, um, in shading, it was hard to find three different Silkies that, um, this is going to be messy and I'm aware. It was hard to find three different spools of sulky that adequately um, depicted that change in shading. Don't look at that bobbit nation. I'm aware. Um, but I was able to successfully pick out um, converted colors for the remainder of them. And they come on these spools which roll around your project bag um, 
kind of haphazardly and you kind of got to shuffle through them to find your color and the colors are on these little labels on the top it's not gonna focus is it you don't have to take my word for it they come on these little labels on the top i'm still trying to focus yeah, that's fine um and the more you shuffle around in the bag i didn't i was afraid of the labels coming off so i took an old watch tin um one of my watches came in this tin and I took the tin and I put, hopefully these will not all fall out. I put all of the spools in this tin and it's quite perfect. And I put them in numerical order so I don't have to worry about the labels coming off or rolling around in my project bag and it's all perfect. So without further ado, here is, this is a long piece of fabric long piece of fabric and here is my start my it's two people it's two people the outside needle, needle minder how accurate is that it's two way too people the outside how cool is that oh I love it get up close for you and that's using sulky threads except for down here in the sandy area those are the threads that i showed you that were bobbinated everything else is silky and i'm in love with it something about by the bay needle arts right i mean they're just so pretty and simple but not prim something country countrified about it i don't know i don't know how to describe by the bay they're just so pretty and it's so funny with that water. When I pulled out the spool, the colors for the water, I thought it was wrong because it was such a funny green. Like this right here. It's such a funny green for water, but it works. Look at those little sheep. Aren't they ridiculous? It's, it's just... So that's the start of my By the Bay Needle Arts trio that I'm doing all on this one piece of fabric. Um, off the top of my head, I don't remember what the count is. I think it's a 36. Maybe it's a 32. I don't know. I have notes on it, but not in front of me, but I have it recorded. So that's that. On that same shopping trip, to buy the bay no not buy the bay needle arts on the same shopping trip to dying to stitch i picked this up now this is something i noticed on the wall um and you have seen this no doubt by many other people um well that's just awful wait a minute huh pattern's not in here. I have the working copy of my pattern, but the actual pattern isn't in here. Where is it? I don't know. It's probably in another project bag where it shouldn't be. This is the Quaker Seasons of Friendship by Crown and Thistle. I will insert a picture of the pattern here. That is what it looks like. Um, you might have seen a lot of people doing this. I believe Diana and Amy started a sow for this. Um, and this was also um, Caroline's high tea start for April 1st. A lot of people working on this. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is very wrinkled because it's been inside the project bag and I did not properly prepare for this, this video. So, that is where I am. Oh, doesn't that look pretty? Oh, I like that. This is platinum. I'm trying to stretch it out. This is platinum. Um, I believe it is 40 count platinum. 
by Zweigart. And the thread that I'm using, which is in the bag, just no pattern, it's fine, is Mediterranean Sea by Gentle Arts Sampler Threads. There's an up close. See the blues and the greens? Quite lovely. This is one of those patterns where the more you look at it, the more you see. Um, I bought this pattern and one of the first things that stood out to me was the little lobster and it was Caroline that pointed out the little crab I didn't even see a crab um, so it's so it's just so funny the longer the longer you look at it the more you see um, so this is a very enjoyable pattern it's it's I cut it caught my eye on the wall um, they used a very neutral fabric and they also used a very neutral thread. So it was very clean and delicate looking um, and teeny, teeny, tiny stitches. I think that the model was stitched on 40 count as well. Maybe it was 46, I don't know. Um, but it was beautiful. And this is, um, Crown and Thistle is the brand created by the owners of Dying to Stitch. So that is their pattern. Um, you can call Dying to Stitch to um, place the order over the phone and they will get it right out to you. It is a brick and mortar shop um, that is no doubt shut down right now, but they may or may not still be um, accepting phone orders. Um, but give them a call and see if they can get that out to you because if they can, they will and they'll do it quickly. Mm. Got to show you the project bag that that was in. This is a bag I... I didn't find it online. Somebody actually sent me a link um, saying, hey, have you seen this? Because apparently they knew what I like. This is Creations by Mary Rose on Etsy. Look at that. Sorry, I just shook the camera. Gosh, I mean, I like what I like. And that's gorgeous, isn't it? And then the inside is like this kind of burnt orange woven type fabric, but it's a clear front. What's in here? This is one of my Garon Fabric of the Month bags. What? One of my Garon Project Bags of the Month bags. Last year I did the Bag of the Month um, with So Much to Love um, because I have a high level of appreciation for Project Bags. Last year I did so much to love. This year I'm doing um, Garon tote bags. And what you can't see, oh yeah, you can a little bit. The shamrocks are shimmery. Very pretty. Um, Garon tote bags, get you some. This is the interior, not fun. So what's in here? Do, 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 I don't know, yes I do. There's that. There's two projects in here. And then, and some haul. There are not two projects in here. All right. I'll take that out to show with haul. What's in here is my start. This was when I was in my starting all the things phase. What's in here is my start on Descending Order by Long Dog Samplers. Um, I will insert a picture here. Because I have this pattern on PDF. I was inspired to start this by um, Ellen who's looks like she's well on her way to being done. Um, me too, Ellen. <laughs> I'm almost done too. Yeah. Hmm, whatever. There's my start. Using the call for colors and I'm stitching this on 32 count Belfast in Sweet Pea by Fabrics by Stephanie.
And that's where we started and ended with that. Um, put this back in here. Next up. <laughs> you think I like project bags made by Diana? I don't know, maybe. Maybe I do. Yeah. This was another one that she had on sale in the Eclipse Possessions group. And I was on it like white on rice for a number of reasons, obvious reasons. This is... This is linens and things. Okay, I was trying to remember, is this the linens and things stitch along or the modern folk embroidery? This is the linens and things stitch along. Um, you might have seen it posted. This is my progress. I did not make it through February. Shame. Um, yeah, it's now April. I finished January. I did not finish February. Or maybe I did. I don't know. I'm not up to speed. I'm not up to date. So let's talk about this for a minute. I don't know the floss that I'm using off the top of my head. It's in my notes that I keep, but I don't have them in front of me. This is Silks For You. I cut it and braided it up. Beautiful sage greens and lilacs and lavenders. Um, hunter greens in there. Beautiful, right? So that is what I'm using. Again, this is what it looks like stitched up. Now, let's talk about this for a couple of minutes. So, this um, design has initials all through it. Um, gosh, I keep trying to think, is this linens and threads or is this modern folk? It is linens and threads, I keep going through that. And it has initials all through the design. And um, I was going to stitch the initials as I go. This is the only initials. These are the only initials that I've placed so far. Um, but I've decided to wait until the end for a specific reason. Because I want to make sure for the initials that I choose that they're strategically placed evenly throughout the design. Um, and this design is, the idea behind it was to um, stitch the initials of your friends and family. And what I decided to do was stitch the initials of my family um, on not only my family and my husband's family of our um, family members that have passed on. So... Um, At this point in time, I don't know how I want to place them. I know who, of course, I want to be included. I don't want to go back several generations, um, but I definitely want to include our grandparents, um, or in, in my case, my sibling or, or our fathers, um, first cousins, or you know, beyond. But I definitely want this to be a memorial sampler of sorts um, for those that have you know, passed on. So, so far I have GN, which is my father's initials. And I am going to be frogging this out because I decided I don't like that teal with these colors. Um, I just don't like it. I almost think I want it to be a very neutral, like the palest, the palest sage greens or beiges where you can see the 3D effect, but not necessarily have the initials in your face. I almost want it to be something that blends into this fabric. I think that'll be beautiful, but we'll see. This is 36 count Medina in clay pebble. That's what this fabric is. And it's 36 count Medina is an even weave 36 count and it's absolutely divine. I'm quite sure I picked this up on one of my adventures at Floss Tube Retreats in New Jersey. Um, my needle minder is I love nerds because I am a nerd and 
I love nerds and, you know, nerds are cool. So that is that. Now, if you know, if you know, you know, some fun facts about Letitia as a stitcher, one of the things Letitia does not do is participate in stitch alongs. And that is because Letitia likes to play, but she doesn't like to follow the rules. Meaning that I like the idea of a stitch along, but I never, ever keep up with it. The linens and threads stitch along from last year with the peacock, I was all in, went gangbusters. I didn't get past that center motif. It, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a, you know, genetic disposition. I cannot do it. I, I don't, I don't finish stitch alongs. Um, but that one, even if it takes forever, it's a beautiful design. I absolutely am not likely to finish it by the end of this year. Um, because I'm, I'm not wired that way to, you know, pay attention and focus for that long. Um, I don't like it when, with stitching when rolls come into play it, it takes the fun away from it for me but I definitely want to finish that one um simply because of the idea behind the piece um little coffee break there this is another Garon Toten bags bag of the month I believe this was February for Valentine's Day I love that it's like a chalkboardy type design there's the inside of it. This contains my two starts that I started on March 14th for my self-care, hashtag self-care new start. Yeah, hashtag self-care new start. Right. So the first one, let's see if can pull out what it looks like because that would be helpful wouldn't it this is the first time I have ever stitched a Cloremi design Cloremi design I fell down a rabbit hole thanks to Ellen from Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour she's stitching the Glorious sampler I chose the Flying High sampler because you guessed it look at those peacocks now, here's where the rabbit hole started. I went on their website. If you go on the Chlorami Designs website, she does red samplers. That's, that's the body of her work, is red samplers. But when you see them all on display together, You're going to want to stitch every last one of them like I do. So I'm stitching this with the 12 ply silk by Splendor. Do you guys know about Splendor from Rainbow Gallery? Is it, It's not that bright. It's like, um, it's much brighter than it is. I don't know. It's red. It's like a, it's like a nice not a dark red it's a nice rich dark christmas red it's just not let me see something what am i doing um it's red so these are 12 12 strand 12 ply 12 ply strand stranded silk by Splendor, but from Rainbow Gallery, and it's pretty great. I think this whole card, um, it's like three bucks. I don't know. It's on one, two, three stitch. It's in most needle workshops. Um, so this is 12 plies of silk by eight yards. I really enjoy this. I enjoy working with it. If you guys remember my fish from years ago that, no, no, I haven't finished it. Stop judging me. So that fish, I was using the 12, the 12 ply um, stranded silk for that one as well, but that was in like an olive green. Um, gosh, I haven't worked on that fish in forever. But anyway, Flying High Sampler by Clover Me Designs. Brace yourselves. It's pretty shocking how far I got. I mean, I was 
got a lot done. So, yeah. This is a, this is why I should have my notes. I think this is a 40 count. It's definitely one over two. I'm pretty sure this is 40 count. Or is it 46? I don't know. And actually, my Quaker friendship sampler, I, no, I think this is 46. Yeah, and my Quaker friendship um, sampler is on 40 count. I'm unprepared. This is impromptu. And I don't have my notes in front of me, so. All of this stuff is in my Instagram with all the, the notes if you were interested in finding out what count that is. This second hashtag self care new start 46 minutes. This is going to be a long one, guys. Um, my second self care new start was um, on an unknown fabric. I believe it's a 32 count, but the designer is a very good friend of ours, um, Jan Hicks from D Jan Hicks Designs. She came out with a new design. I don't remember the release date, but I remember I was on vacation when she showed it and I knew I had to have it. Um, I will insert a picture of it here. Um, this is Narnia by Jan Hicks Designs. And this is my start. Let me give it a tug and get that crinkle out of there. So I am using Silks For You, um, two Silks For You hanks. One of them is variegated. One of them is a beautiful royal plum purple. I don't know what this fabric is. I believe it's a fabric by LJ. It was in my stash. Um, but this is the border. Turn my light back on so you can see better. There you go. There's my border fabric. My border floss, the beautiful variegated. And this is the beautiful royal purple. Good stuff. I haven't worked on it since that day, though. I will definitely come back to those, too. I can't stop thinking about my Quaker seasons of friendship. I, I put it somewhere stupid. You know what? I wonder if it's downstairs because I printed a working copy. No, it's in here somewhere. I might have put it in another project bag by accident. I'll find it. It'll, it'll show up one day. This one, I believe I showed this to you before and I'm not sure that I have worked on this since. But I'm going to show it to you again. This is Autumn Quakers by Rosewood Manor. And this is my progress. I'm stitching this on 28 count mushroom Lugana using the called for Valdani threads. I started this as part of a sale in the Garon Toten Bag group and it was a sale. I am going to finish that though. I'm just not going to finish it on the timelines. Well, there weren't really any timelines, but I started it and I'll get back to it. This one is one of my favorites too. Trying to find the main page. In this baggie, I have both my original and my working copy. Um, 
so it's a lot to sort through to find the picture of the actual pattern. You know what would probably be easier if I just said I'm going to go ahead and insert a copy of, wait, whoop, whoop, nope. I'm going to go ahead and insert a copy of the picture here. This is Opus Magnussen by Long Dog Samplers. Using the called for threads on some type of ivory even weave. 25 count even weave. There's the start. Oh, that's where we are anyway. Now, I had a bit of a scare here um, with fabric size. So as you can see, I had to make sure that my fabric was wide enough to hold the design. It is most certainly long enough, um, but I had a little bit of a scare. So I went ahead and stitched all the way to each side and it's fine, as you can see. Very angry baby needle minder. One of my favorites. There we go. Nice little flower. Mama tiger. And some cool cats and kittens. Tiger king fans. Is that a tiger? I don't know. I don't know what type of animal that that is. We have to bet you Carol Baskin knows. So anyway. That is Opus Magnussen by Long Dog Samplers. I love that Long Dog because he's very, it's very um, different. It's not the, I'm still looking for that cover page. No, I'm not going to find it. Anyway. Um, hopefully by now I've inserted the picture. But um, I love that long dog because it's so different. It's not like the Beer Latin or Quaker-esque type sampler. Long dog is, is really good for an unusual sampler, isn't it? And that one was unusual. This is the April bag of the month that I get one on Tilton Bay. Some bunnies, Easter eggs. Pretty pastel plaid there. see what's in here shall we so this was my April high tea start I purchased this pattern from kitten stitcher there are the colors the glosses pretty accurate this is more of a pumpkin it's coming up kind of red it's more of a dark pumpkin and see if I can get you a look-see at the actual pack design. This is 1717 Friesland Sampler by Queenstown Sampler Designs. Let me tell you why this fell into my hot little hands. I saw it stitched. The picture doesn't do it justice at all. So I started this on April 1st for high tea. My needle miter just fell off. And here is my start. I'm stitching this on 46 count Bergen linen. I'm in love with 46 count Bergen linen. It's white. I can't remember the last time I actually just stitched on plain white. And I wanted to stitch on plain white because I wanted, this is one of those things where a lot of these colors are muted browns and um, browns, blues, and greens, but then there's some richer pops of color and I really wanted everything to just pop. 
So I stitched it on white. Let me go ahead and stretch this out because hashtag unprepared. Look at those letters. Can you see? I'm trying to see what you can see. There you go. Look at those letters. Isn't that fun? And this isn't my normal jam. This is not something I would typically be drawn to. But I saw it stitched in person. And it was kind of kind of crazy. I had to have it. So here we are. Um, so I started this for high tea. Um, and then I worked on it maybe for, I think, five days um, and felt myself getting a little bit bored by the letters um, not bored but I was ready to go back to tribal monkey I'm a huge fan of comfort stitching right now stitch what brings you comfort what makes you feel good um, and that's tribal monkey for me so I was ready to go back to him so I only stitched on this for uh, just shy of a week um, don't know why I'm showing that again all right, next. This is an Evertoads bag, an Evertoads bag. This is the sweater, Christmas sweater. Get your sweaters. It was part of a holiday design or part of her holiday series. You have your sweaters here and you have a denim blue jean bottom of the bag because the sweaters and then you have the jeans on the bottom because you wear your sweaters and then you wear jeans so it's you see what she did there so let's see what we have in here this is actually what I worked on what I showed during the Flossmas video that I did for Caroline's Flossmas series this is another Long Dog Samplers. Sans Souci. I don't know. Sans Souci. I am using First of all, my Friday off the grid party pants are on. They're always on these days. Always on. And this is the floss that I'm using, which is, I don't know what it is because it's in here. It's Threadworks, Bleeding Hearts by Threadworks. That's what it is. It is number 1089, Bleeding Hearts by Threadwork, Threadworks. I don't know why this is in here, but I need it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I know I have more than one skein of this, don't I? Do I only have two 20 yard skeins? No. Pardon me. Just wanna show you my scissors real quick and the beautiful scissor fob by the creative curator with K's. Her beautiful, beautiful work. Um, I think I have a couple of more of hers, but this is what's in my notions bag. So I just wanted to show you. Also have these little pretty scissors with this gorgeous fob. And I don't remember off the top of my head who made it, but isn't that pretty? All right. Bleeding Hearts by Threadworks. You know what it was? I know exactly why I only have two skeins. I purchased two 20-yard skeins. This is a, a Bleeding Hearts. But I had in my stash the smaller 5-yard skein of Bleeding Hearts. Um, and I believe when I purchased the additional two skeins it was number one because I had already used up the five yard skein in my whip 
Um, and number two, I think that's all they had at the time. So that's why I only have two. Okay. Everybody updated? Everybody good? So here is my progress on that. With my Frankie Butt Needle Minder. Yep. Pretty cool, huh? I like that a lot. I haven't worked on it since I showed it for my Flossmas video. Um, I haven't worked on it. So I would say the last time I worked on this was in December of 2019. Um, I think we're down to our last two whip bags. This is the straight up whip parade, isn't it? This is Esther's Waves by Northern Expressions Needlework. Let's see if I can find the pattern to show you. I can. That is it. I changed all the colors. This is the Specialty Threads version. I changed all of the colors um, to blues and greens um, in a thread pack provided by Fiberlicious Threads, Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers, um, and I picked my own beads from, I think it was FusionBeads.com, pretty sure of it. And this is my progress on this one. I don't know why I did that. There we go. Sparkle, sparkle. So, um, I don't think this is the halfway mark. I would say it's the one third of the way. I am beating as I go. There were multiple mistakes made in this last row. If I didn't point them out to you, I don't know if you would see it. Maybe you will. The Jessica stitches, some of them are vertical, some of them are horizontal. And I think I messed up in each of these. If you look at this one right underneath my nose you see how the top and the bottom Jessica stitches right here let me let me do this I need a pointer sunshine stitchers so you see how you see how this one and this one they're both vertical see how this one is horizontal and this one is vertical that's wrong these should both be horizontal See how this one is vertical? This one is horizontal? That's wrong. This, these should both be vertical. Let's see if I can find another one randomly. Did you hear that? That was my stomach. Vertical, vertical, correct. Horizontal, vertical, incorrect. See? I think I messed up. <laughs> these are all horizontal. At least two of them should be vertical. Vertical, I messed up on every single one of these. I am a rock star. I wonder if there's anybody else that messed up on every single one of them in that row. But you still can't really see it, like unless your eye knows what you're looking for. And even now that I showed it to you, I still think it looks great. So I'm gonna keep going. And that's Esther's Waves. I don't remember when I worked on that last. It was definitely, probably last year. Definitely, probably. And I think I have one last whip to share. My stomach is really making a lot of noise. Last one. So, 
in February, um, I went on an adventure. For Christmas, my husband and I gave each other a gift to Spain. We went to Spain for eight days. It was fantastic. And specifically, we went to Barcelona. It was fantastic. Um, that was our Christmas present to each other, like I said, but um, it was planned 10 months in advance, but we just pretty much said, okay, Christmas, birthdays, we're good. Great. Um, let me show you this real quick because it's in my hand. This is a GGR design. It's called the Peacock Tree. That's what it's translated to. Larbe de Vio Pan. I don't know. But it translates to the Peacock Tree. I started this on the plane going to Barcelona or maybe before that. I messed it up. I didn't mess it up. I was stitching at two over two on 36 count and I didn't like how it looked. I thought it looked too bulky. So I ripped it out. Fun fact, that's what I did on the whole plane ride back. It was an eight hour flight. The whole plane ride back, I wasn't stitching. I was ripping out two over two stitches on 40 count. And I restarted it on Sorry for all the crinkling. I restarted it. No. Two over two on 36 count. I ripped it out. I restarted it. Um, and it got very little done. It was still on the same um, journey. I restarted it one over two. And it's very minimal. But I got so far with the two over two and just ripped it all out. Because I didn't like how it looked. It didn't want to go through the rest of it. Okay. Barcelona. So the reason why I'm telling you about that trip is because I decided that I wanted to have a memorial piece for that vacation. That was my first time to Europe. Um, it was a pretty big deal for me. Um, hmm. This was one of the... Somebody stitched this for me while I was there. It's on a piece of paper. They were, it was an embroidery shop. They stitched it and I think I'm going to laminate it and have it inserted into a project bag somehow. We'll reach out to somebody much more adept at sewing than I am to see if they can help me with that. I digress. This is the pattern that I worked on. It is called Barcelona. Um, I am going to insert a full color picture of it here. But this is what it looks like. It does no justice to the actual color version. This is stitch two over two on 28 count. I actually started this while in Barcelona, which was the actual plan. Um, I did not intend to finish it while I was there, obviously, but I wanted this as my memorial piece and to be able to say that I started it while I was there. And I did. And that's how far we got. All DMC. And you can see it's fairly small because this is like a 9 by 13, 9 by 18. This is a fatty. No, 13 by 18. Yeah. So that is it for the whips. Only took an hour and eight minutes. Is this going to be like a Jesse movie? Maybe. be. <laughs> No, you silly rabbit. Nothing is like a Jesse movie. I love a Jesse movie. I'm always here for a Jesse movie. So, I'm going to have regrets later for how I'm shoving these back in here. All right, now that's it. Now I'm going to talk about my haul. That's pretty much going to be, um, now I'm going to talk about the books too. It's just going to be a juicy one. It's just going to be a juicy video. It's fine because it's been a while since we've been together right unapologetically juicy hashtag unapologetically juicy mm. I love coffee so let me share a couple of things with you before I go into my haul um I 
fallen down a hoop rabbit hole. I've been on this hoop kick lately. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, because I think it was Vanna that talked about on one of her fiber talks or maybe a regular video. She talked about the Hardwick Manor hoops um, and how beautifully, beautifully crafted they were. But she also talked about how she wrapped her hoops up in twill tape and um, how it eliminates the rings. You don't have the hoop marks. So I got a, I purchased, I didn't get anything. I purchased a Hardwick, Hardwick Manor hoop because Vanna said so. And this is it. And I wrapped it up in the twill tape, which was very easy to do. And she was right. It doesn't leave marks. It, but what it really does, I'm pulling a mini right now with the romper room. What it really does is help with the tension as well. The tension is so good. But here, here, here's the key. Hardwick Manor hoops, as far as hoops go, they're on the pricier side. It's a beautifully crafted hoop. Make no mistake about it. You get what you pay for. But I also have hoops that you get from Joann's and Michael's, right? Or that you get in bulk, the bulk set from Amazon, which are considerably, considerably less, right? This tape, they call it twill tape. I think this is bias tape. I'm not... I'm not fluent in sewing notion language. So I think this is bias tape. My sewists out there would know. But I literally wrap it around. Um, Vana has a better tutorial on anything I'm about to show you. But I like hold it down there and just wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap. And then I sew. Or you can use fabric glue, but that's what I did. <laughs> that's what I did. It works. But this is on one of the less expensive hoops. This is my drug of choice right now. These little, this thing right here, Shiloh um, X Stitch MD. Love Shiloh. I want to stitch everything she ever lays her hands on. I'm I'm obsessed with everything she stitches. It's a problem. Um, she showed these hoops. I think, I don't remember, no, no, it was during something where everybody was posting something about their favorite things last month or something, and she talked about these hoops, and she says she got them on Amazon, and she sent me the link that to Amazon that she used, and it looked like it was a multi, um, multiple size set, which is fine, but they also had, they also had, um, A set of three in this size which is the size that I prefer I would much rather have three of these than four variables varied sizes that I wouldn't use um, so I got this set of three it was like $12 or something and the tension on this without without the twill tape was amazing I loved it I loved it a few people I posted about it after I received it a few people um, asked me where I got it from and I, I sent them the link and they had the same response. They love the tension. But when you wrap this twill tape around it, it takes the hoop marks out and doesn't crush your stitches. It didn't crush my stitches before. I just like knowing that my fabric is more protected because this lip right here, there is a, a lip on the inside right here that's like grooved almost like a hoopla um, where it creates that lip over your, your fabric and it's really nice tension. But when you wrap it up, um, the hoop marks go away. And I've fallen back in love with hoops. So this used to be five yards, but I've used it to wrap hoops. I've used it for mask making. Um, it's, it's being loved right now. But this was five yards for a pretty good price I got on Amazon. So I just wanted to share some of my hoop love with you real quick. So let's talk about the haul that we've acquired over the last six months. Just going to show this stuff to you, tell you whether it's kitted or not. I'll give you a little story behind it if one applies. And I also have a random act of kindness. Um, she didn't give me permission to share her name, but 
I'm going to talk about her. I'm not going to say her name out of respect for that if she didn't want me to. Um, then I'm still going to gush over her. She knows who she is. So we're going to start with the haul. Um, get all this stuff together. I went on this, this little kit frenzy. <laughs> I went on a little kit, kit frenzy. And like I said, this is me. Like, I feel like I'm apologizing, but I'm not. But this was over the past six months. I, I need Bill to need to tell you that. Um, again, because it's a lot. All right, so let's start with, I got some yarn. This is from Lola Bean Yarn Co. This is Canary Bean Sport Weight 100% Superwash Merino in shades of autumn. Oh my God. There's three of these that I purchased, but one of them has already been wound up. So I got some yarn. Don't know what I'm making with it. Um, this is a Perman kit with elephants. I got a lot of kits. This is Caroline's fault. This is Caroline's fault. Caroline went on a retreat and, you know, she knew what she was doing too. It's fine. It's fine. Caroline went on a retreat, one of her retreats, um, her weekend retreats, or maybe it was a day retreat. One of the retreats she goes to, not the one, not this, of course not Stitch North because it's not even September, October yet. Anyway, she went on a retreat and somebody next to her was stitching this and she took a picture of it and she sent it to me. So you are going to send me a picture of a pattern with lots of colors, little abstract, cats and it's a kit i was on amazon in like 17 seconds and it's a laurel birch design putting to cross stitch so this resulted in a rabbit hole because it can't travel by itself <laughs> there's another one another laurel birch kit from amazon they travel together I'm going to make her look like me. Maybe, actually, I might give her even darker skin because all those colors. Yeah, I might even give her darker skin. Like uh, the Pita Nyong'o. I think that'll be beautiful. This that caught my eye and had a very attractive price. I'm going to have a lot of cleaning up to do. Henna Mandela. Did I get this from Kitten Stitcher? I don't think I did. I don't know. Maybe. This is the Hannah Mandela by Ink Circles. This was a um, market release, was it? If it was, I got it from Cottage Garden. And apparently, I'm going to stitch it on doubloon, 32 count doubloon linen. The Sampler Company Designs um, by Brenda Keys. This is the Plant Wisdom Sampler. I'm pretty sure this is Caroline and Brian's fault. Pretty sure of it. Permanent of Copenhagen Museum Chell Sampler 1826. Because, yes. Stupid glare. Okay, what have we here? This was both of these. There's a fun story behind this. So if you know Just Possibly on um, Instagram or Annie on Facebook, you know um, her mother, Mama Smurphy, um, Dearly beloved within the community, both of them. Um, but her mother sadly passed away um, last year. 
and Annie posted a picture on Instagram of um, her daughter doing some cross stitch. And in the background was this long horizontal pattern of just trees. And the piece that her daughter stitched was beautiful. I was there for it, but I couldn't stop looking at the pattern on the wall in the background. And I was looking at it because Stitch Rody held up a pattern that she finished. She went to France to get this. She was in France when she got this pattern. And it was a long blue um, piece of linen with white trees stitched along it. And the picture in the background of behind Annie's daughter was very similar to what cross, what Stitch Rody showed. And it was so long ago that Stitch Rody got that pattern. And again, it was in France. She didn't remember the name of the pattern that, that she shouldn't, right? Um, yeah, it was a while ago. I think it was like, I think she said it was close to 20 years ago, maybe 10. I don't know, but it was long enough to not recall the pattern. Um, so I messaged Annie and I asked her, what is that in the background? And she sent me a picture of it. And she said that her mother stitched it, Mama Smurphy. And I said, I believe that's my unicorn pattern, the one I've been looking for. Because ever since that, not that I've been looking for, but just kind of on the lookout for it because I was flying blind. I had no idea what the pattern was called or how to even be begin to ask what the pattern was called when Stitch Rody showed it. And she said that Mama Smurphy, when she finished um, a pattern, she put it on the back of the work. So she would always know, you know, you would always know what it was. And because of Mama Smurphy, I was able to locate not only the unicorn pattern, but a companion piece. These are both by um, RMP. Renato Carlin, I don't know. They're in um, Italian. I ordered them from Italy. Decent prices. But I got my unicorn pattern. Thank you, Annie and Mama Smurphy. Sweet story behind that. So this is, I fell down, I showed you the peacock tree, right? Um... I fell down a GGR Designs rabbit hole. I just went all the way down the. I just went all the way down the hole. It's fine. So apparently, I need this to. I don't know because my last name starts with the B and it's pretty. I needed. I needed it. There you go. GGR. I'll show you what I just smiled at in a minute. GGR Designs Rabbit Hole number two. I messaged Emily when I saw this and I asked her, do you have this? Because this looks like something you would have. She didn't have it. This is Elizabeth Biggs, 1833. Somebody's stitching this. Who's stitching this? It's not me. This is why I smiled. Because... I found my Quaker Seasons of Friendship sound. I told you I put it in there with um, Quaker Seasons of Friendship sound. That's not what it's called. My pattern. I told you I probably stuck it in somewhere with some haul. There you go. For some reason, that doesn't look clear to me. Oh, yeah. There's the lobster that I was talking about. That's the first thing that caught my eye. But in the bottom left-hand corner, Caroline likes to start in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little crab. I never even noticed the crab. There is so much to see in this picture. There is a flamingo. There is, there are two squirrels. There are seahorses. There's a teapot. There's Christmas trees. And I know there's a peacock in here somewhere. 
we're not going to do this. We're not going to analyze this pattern live in, in person right now. But I found my pattern. So when I clean up this ginormous mess that I've made, I will put that where it belongs. There's another by the bay. This is Colonial Harbor. It's pretty. This is one of the monthly letters from mom. This is the August one. Kid it or not. After the rain, I don't know why, something about her. I just loved it. I might be changing the colors. I'll definitely be changing the skin. Maybe I won't change the colors. I don't know. There's something about that pattern that spoke to me. Another Panna design, another Panna kit. They're having a good time in that picture, aren't they? Mer, 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 Merit, oh. Marishka? Marishka. Marishka. Isn't that pretty? Sweet plums. It reminds me of that apple design that Teresa stitched. That was pretty insanely gorgeous. Alright. Bent Creek. The journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. I think this is called the begin row. Oh, I'm not showing you anything. Here you go. It comes with some embellishments. The blue flower. Night walked down. Night walked down the sky with the moon in her hand. Got a white peacock there. A little Jacobian feel. Black cap. Yes, please. The drawn thread, the marriage of minds. This says, let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. It is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. I apologize. I don't have my glasses on. So I struggled with that a little bit. Marriage of the Minds. I just thought that was beautiful. Drawn Thread, The Wayward Garden. The little bird sampler. And this one I got, well, I think a few of these I got while I was in dying to stitch. The sunny side sampler by the drawn thread. Oh uh, my gosh. I believe this one was stitched on the model on their wall and they changed that, the alphabet at the bottom to say Kempsville. It's pretty great. Um, I want to put some of these back in this one bag because some, there's some threads in there. Pardon me. Excuse me. Talk amongst yourselves. Don't want to get my patterns away from the threads that they're supposed to go with because that will cause confusion and mayhem for future Letitia. All right, and we are coming down the pike. This is my, I'll show you one more thing. Um, got a Gecko Rouge kit, Frida Kahlo, because I thought that was pretty crazy good. I thought that was crazy good.
All right. Now, last but not least for haul is this was not from market. This I got because I saw it. Um, Shelia was working on it on the Sunshine Stitchers, and I had to have it. I'll read you what it says. This is, what's it called? Seeds of Freedom? I think so. Twas 1861, the Civil War had just begun. In 1863, Lincoln declared all slaves free. In 1865, few good men were left alive. I'll pay respects to all I owe and help their seeds of freedom grow. It's pretty awesome. Silver Creek samplers. I think I might have accidentally said Bent Creek. Um, Little House Needleworks, an open book is a window into the world. Okay, put that up. I feel like this is not coming up clear when I show it to you. Um, and last was, last thing I'm going to show you is my market haul. Fun fact, this is the first time I've ever bought anything um, on pre-order from market. Um, I think it was either last year or the year before that I even found out what market was. I had no idea. Um, and even then when I found out, I was like, I, I wasn't. I wasn't motivated. I wasn't um, like Ooh, new releases. I would, I've never been that person. Um, but I went on the cottage needle because they were the only place that I actually found that showed all the market releases. Um, I didn't know where to go to look at what the market releases were before. Kind of, I saw them when people showed them to me. Um, so I went on to the cottage needle on Etsy and she had them all. I only bought, I, I bought a few things. That's it. Um, I bought this one, Blend in Place, specifically because of the calla lilies. Calla lily is my all-time favorite flower, and I very rarely see um, cross-stitch with calla lilies in it. And it has a poem inside that says, Until we meet again, those special memories of you will always bring a smile. If I could only have you back for just a little while, then we could sit and talk again, just like we used to do. You always meant so very much, and you always will. The fact that you're no longer here will always cause me pain. But forever in my heart, you'll be until we meet again. And I think I'm going to change that. Um, to me, there's a difference between being dark, something that's dark, and something that's sad. And that's just... It's just sad to me and I, I don't want to stitch something sad as a memorial um I just don't I don't want to stitch something sad I would prefer something beautiful as um, a memorial or something dark but poetic if that makes sense this to me is just sad so I think I'm going to stitch the calla lily the calla lily wreath and maybe put um, a different poem in there. Maybe, um, I don't know. I was about to say some Toni Morrison. Um, no, she didn't write poems. She mm, No, she didn't really write poems. But I am going to take the eye, that eyeball by Alessandra Adelaide. And stitch that I have the pattern already I've had it for years but I'm gonna make it a blue eye um, to pay homage to Toni Morrison who passed away last year she was my all-time favorite and I'm just going to make it a big blue eye with a quote from her book the bluest eye and that's how I'm gonna pay homage to Toni Morrison um, that was so random out of left field but you see where I was going with that the second one Jesse is already working on this and it's it's flipping amazing it looks so beautiful, just um, the small start that she started. So this says, this is Seeking Refuge. It reads, when the world seems to be out of control, I find a way to nurture my soul, seeking refuge with needle and thread, the angst and anxiety I no longer dread. And that's by the Scarlet House. 
the third market release. It's pretty funny because I already have the big red ship of life. But this one is a smaller version with elephants in it. It's got a big old elephant in it. And I had to have that. And it's different. So it's like a companion piece, I guess. You should see this pile in front of me. It's so it's a mess. And that was all my haul. Hour and a half. It's fine. The last thing I'm going to show you um, kind of blew my mind a little bit. Um, because as stitchers, we know what we know when it comes to, you know, um, it's not a cheap hobby, right? And this person, I don't want, I don't want to say her name. Um, she's kind of behind the scenes and I didn't ask permission. So I won't do that to her. This per and you, you might know who it is when I show this. Um, but this person recently finished this and it was absolutely beautiful. And I fell in love with the zebra and she said that's what caught her eye too and she recently finished this I want to say maybe a couple of weeks ago um, and this is Jane Portuez 1837 by samplers not forgotten so she messaged me um, and said I knew you you admired the zebra just like I do I'm finished would you like the pattern and she didn't want to charge me anything for it. She just wanted to, you know, let it be a love gift, um, which I truly appreciated. But not only that, she sent me all of the silks that she used as well. So that's pretty awesome. Now, one thing, um, like I said, I'm not going to say her name, but I am going to say this, and I'm sorry if I'm embarrassing you, um, because it should be said. She's also one of our modern day superheroes. So, um, she is out there every day doing her thing as a CRNA. Um, and I just want to say thank you on a multitude of levels um, for all that you do and all that you have done. Thank you. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. Greatly appreciate that. And you. And guys, I think I'm done. I think that that was quite the update. I think we had all the whips. We had all the haul. We had all the things. Um, and yet there's more. So Caroline, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago maybe, announced that she was starting a book Club, online book club called Cross Stitchers Who Read. And there are a lot of us cross stitchers who read. And the book that was chosen was Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood of The Handmaid's Tale fame. Um, our first book discussion is on this coming Saturday, April 18th. Um, I am reaching out to Caroline now to do iron out some details, a couple of little um, hiccups that I ran into with Zoom, where it might end up just being a live discussion um, where I just go live and like people give me comments. It might be something like that. But long story short, I'm going to be moderating the discussion for the group. Um, so I just want to talk about that book club. Um, you can join the group. You don't have to read or have read the books that are being discussed or selected. You can join in and see what people are talking about or join in and watch the video and um, just participate. It's fun. You know, it's books, it's cross-stitching, bring your stitching, bring some tea, bring some coffee. Good times. Good times are needed right now, right? Um, also, as far as books go, I just wanted to talk about that. She's still in the process. I think um, she put a poll out there to see what the members think about our next read. Um, but this read is going to be, this book discussion is going to be this coming Saturday. Um, I believe it's at 12 p.m. But I might look at those times again because I know we have some people in Australia. 
and I really want to be able to include them and there's such a massive um, time difference so I want to see what we can do with that but right as of right now it's at 12 p.m. Um, what else uh, last year I really got back into reading the way that I used to um, when I was younger um, even into young adulthood well well into later adulthood too up until my 30s I was always reading always 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 reading even as a child um, and I think life kind of got in the way um, as I got deeper into adulthood and responsibilities and I stopped reading as much as I did and last year I joined a virtual book club um, where I was moderating monthly discussions and it kind of not forced me but I, I, I had to be productive I had to read these books and it kind of had a tri trickle down effect where ultimately I met my goal um, of reading 50 books and I say reading 50 books because I listen to audiobooks a lot by choice because I like to be able to listen and stitch at the same time there are some books that probably would have been I would have received differently had I actually taken the time to read the book but if I'm sitting there reading the book I miss my stitching um, and there's something there are few things that are quite as peaceful to me as being able to listen to a book and stitch it's 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 a very peaceful moment for me I truly enjoy it um, so that said, last year I met my goal of 50 books. I sent the set the same goal for this year, but I'm already, I th think, Giovanni's Room. No, the book that I'm about to finish right now, These Ghosts Are Family. Yeah. Um, These Ghosts Are Family is going to be the 20th book already, already this year. So I'm almost at the halfway point of reaching my goal. But I just wanted to not talk about the books I've read, but talk about Alias Grace and I slipped down the rabbit hole with that. Um, so if you have any questions about that, check out Caroline's videos. You can most certainly ask me below. Um, but Caroline's videos talks about, um, she's been doing daily videos and she talks about it um, and puts it out there that that um, she created the group. Um, so if you follow Caroline by now, you know about it as well. But feel free to ask me any questions below. I just wanted to put that out there. Um, but that's pretty much all that I had. I think that's enough. An hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. So that being said, I hope that everybody continues to be diligent and be safe and hang in there. Hang in there. Um, one of the things, um, like I said, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of not going to go in any, any gloom and doom. I'm not. Um, but one thing I do want to share with you is something that has worked for me and something that has worked for um, my family because I don't care who you are. This is a transition for all of us. There is something that affects each and every one of us, whether it's mental, financial, emotional, physical, whatever. We are all affected by this in some way, shape or form. But what has strengthened me and what has kept me focused, and I'm not perfect. I've had moments like every single person watching this. I've had all of those moments. But it's about regaining focus too. When you feel yourself kind of going, veering off to the right a little bit, focus on something that you're grateful for. Focus on something that brings you joy. Focus on anything, even if it's... I am so thankful that I can work from home or I'm so thankful um, that I have my stitching to keep me calm or I'm, I'm just thankful for the support. I'm thankful for, you know, that person that does these daily videos or, you know, does these dad jokes that makes me smile. Think of something you're grateful for because it'll stabilize you a little bit and we all need a little bit of stability. So I wish you all well. Um, and may your stitching bring you all the comfort. And I'll see you next time. I'm Leticia. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hi, friends. I'm back. Um, yeah, just when you thought it was over. Here I am again. So um, I meant to add this to the video, and I forgot it. I wanted to do it in the spirit of something that um, Caroline just did. I think somebody else just did it, too. Who just did it? 
Yeah, it was Shiloh. Shiloh just did it. Um, and I think they're making it a thing. Um, and like I said, I just received a random act of kindness. So I'm going to go ahead and pay it forward. So Long Dog Samplers recently released two amazing new patterns. Um, I don't remember their names off the top of my head, but I'll insert pictures of them here. And they're pretty great. I did a Zoom meeting with um, my table from Stitch Fest um, last year. And when I say in that Zoom meeting, we picked that first pattern apart and looked at every single creature on the Zoom meeting, there were, there were things I didn't, I didn't even know were in there. I didn't even notice them. So anyway, that's not what I'm here to say. In the spirit of everything that's going on, in the spirit of giving back to the community, in the spirit of just being kind and appreciating all of you um, for appreciating everything that I do and that I have to share, I want to give away three long dog, long dog, three long dog PDFs. Um, and I'm saying that they just released those two new patterns um, to kind of help people get through, you know, this rut that we're in right now um, and to have that instant gratification. So that being said, I'm going to give away three long dog sampler PDFs. Um, they don't have to be those two, but I'm just saying there's two great new samplers out there. Um, uh, you know the drill. Don't say giveaway. Please be over the age of 18. And I would like you to just tell me what you're grateful for in the midst of all this. What makes you smile? Um, use the word grateful. And I will do the drawing. Um, today's 13th. April 28th. Random. That was my parents' wedding anniversary. So there you go. April 28th, I will do a drawing for three long dog samplers. I'll just need your email address. Um, I do ask that you be a subscriber and who knows, get some monochromatic or multicolored flosses ready and some fabric ready because something good might be coming your way. Um, and if it's just a long dog sampler pattern, that's something to smile about too. Thanks guys.